The following program is a production of the Fairfax Network. But we're going to talk about how the property of equality is used to solve equations in higher level mathematics. In, in algebra and algebra 2, when you're in high school, solving equations is extremely important. In fact, it's the, the whole fundamental thing that we do in mathematics. So today we want to figure out exactly how does an equation work and how is the property of equality involved. Okay? You know an equation is a lot like a balance. It says that one side is equal to the other side. It's a lot like a science balance. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen a science balance? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We don't have a science balance right here, but we've got something better. We've got Nick, and Nick, I want you to be a human balance. Would you mind sliding your chair back a little bit, and we're going to use you as a, an example. All right. Okay, Nick, stick your arms out to the side like you're a science balance. All right? Now, Lori, let me ask you something. If I put a book on his hand, what is going to happen to this side of the balance? Um, it's going to go down. That's right. Could you model that for me? Very good. Okay, now he's out of balance right now, isn't he? Okay, mm -hmm. so Brad, what would I have to do to the balance to bring Nick back into balance? You'd have to put a textbook on his left hand. And when I do that, he'd come right back into balance. Perfect. All right, Lori, suppose I remove the balance, the uh, textbook from this side. What would happen to the balance? It g would go down on that side. Okay, and Nick probably isn't going to mind this at all. Brad, what would I do to bring Nick back into balance again? Take the textbook off his hand. Sure. Well, Nick, you did a great job. Have a seat. Okay, well, we're going to get Nick off the, let Nick off the hook a little bit here, and we're going to go ahead and use my friend Pascal, and he's going to help us. Pascal is a bunny, and his ears are going to serve as a balance for us. Now, I'm going to set this up so that I have three blocks on this side and three blocks on this side. And, of course, if I have it set up like that, his ears would be in balance. Okay? Jessica, what would happen to the balance if I were to remove two, ear, uh, two blocks from this side? The side with more blocks would go down. Just like that. Okay. And Nick, using the property of equality, I want to do the same thing to both sides. So what would I have to do to bring this back into balance? <clears throat> You'd have to take two blocks away from that side. And when I did, lo and behold, it would come right back into balance. And this is exactly what happens with equations. You see, an equation is just like a balance, except in an equation we have an unknown number, okay? And we represent that unknown number using a letter. Does anybody know what that's called? What is that called, Nick? A variable. That's right. Now, I have a variable. I'm going to use x, and I'm going to set up an equation up here on Pascal's ears, okay? And I'm going to set up the equation x plus 3 is equal to 5. Get my all set up. All righty. Now, what we have to do when we solve an equation, we have to get the variable by itself, okay? And when we do, we will know what that variable represented, what number it represented. So using the property of equality, how can I get this variable by itself? Jessica, what would I have to do to get the x by itself? You would have to subtract 3. Okay. I'm going to remove 3 from this side, but when I did, what would happen? it would go down on the other side. Okay, and we're going to use the property of equality to bring it back into balance. We have to do the same thing to the other side. So what will I have to do over here, Nick? Take three blocks away. And when I do, it comes right back into balance, and I now know that x is equal to 2. All right, I think it's time that you try some of these uh, equations, and I'm going to get Pascal to help us, okay? And we'll start with you, Jessica. Again, I'm going to use x as my unknown number. All right, I'm going to give you the equation x plus 3 equals 8. And Pascal, could you put that up for us, please? Jessica, what are you going to do to solve this equation? Well, I have to get the variable by itself. So I'll do x plus 3 minus 3 equals 8 minus 3. Okay, Pascal, could you put those uh, changes in that uh, Jessica suggested for us? And would you do them in color, please, so that we can clearly see them? Excellent. All right, Jessica, what's going to happen now? The answer will be x equals 5. Okay, 
So by using the property of equality, she did the same thing to both sides. Okay, she had to subtract three from both sides, and she got an answer of x equals five. And that's a one-step addition equation. We could also do a one-step subtraction equation. And Lori, I'm going to go to you now. Uh, remember, we can use any letter we want to represent our unknown number. And I'm going to give you a different variable this time. How about y? The equation I'd like you to solve is y minus four equals two. Pascal, put that up. All right, Lori, what do you do? Well, let's see. I need to get the variable by itself using the property of equality. So y minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 4. And a negative 4 plus a positive 4 is 0. So then the variable is by itself. So y is equal to 2 plus 4, which is 6. So y equals 6. Excellent job. And you can see again, Pascal has put those changes in color for us. But we have more to learn. What other operations do we have to deal with in mathematics? Jessica? Multiplication and division. Sure. We're going to have to learn how to solve one-step multiplication equations and one-step division equations. And I'm going to get Pascal to help us again. And Nick, I think I'll start with you. Uh, Pascal, why don't you throw this equation up for us? 4x equals 12. Now, Nick, what was done to the unknown number, the variable, in this equation? It was multiplied by 4. Okay, now using the property of equality, okay, why don't you tell us what you're going to do to solve this equation? Well, you have to get the variable by itself, so you must undo uh, the multiplication by dividing the variable by 4. Okay, so you're going to divide 4x by 4 on the left hand side, right? But what does the property of equality tell you to do also? It says that what you do to one side, you must do to both sides. So you're going to divide 12 by 4 also. Excellent. And I'm going to ask Pascal, make those changes in color for us, Pascal, so we can clearly see what we're doing in the second step. And then, Nick, what is your answer going to be in this problem? x equals 3. Beautiful job. And that's just what we want to do. We want to isolate the variable. We want to get it by itself on one side of the equation. We use the property of equality to do that. And when we do, we'll have our solution. That was great, Nick. You did a really nice job. Well, we still have one more operation to talk about, division. And Brad, we haven't had put you to work yet, so let's uh, give you one. Um, I'm going to give you the equation, I'm going to use a different variable this time, y, okay? And I'm going to give you the equation y divided by 5 equals 3. Pascal, put that up there for us. All right, Brad, what are you going to have to do to solve this division equation? Well, I know I have to get the variable by itself. The equation shows y divided by 5, and I have to undo that by multiplying by 5 on each side of the equation. That's right. You used the property of equality to do that, didn't you? Yes. Okay. And what happens when you solve the problem? Well, the answer is y equals 15. Beautiful. You did a great job also. However, I should tell you something. It's very important to do a check whenever you solve an equation. And I'm going to get Pascal to help me demonstrate that for you now. Let's go to you, Jessica. What was the original equation that you started with, and what was your solution? x plus 3 equals 8, and my solution was x equals 5. Okay, we want to check to see if her answer is correct. So, Pascal, we start with the original equation, x plus 3 equals 8. In the second step, we are going to replace the x. We're going to substitute her answer, 5, where the x was. And we will get, and it's always a good idea to substitute in parentheses, 5 plus 3 equals 8. And the third step will show that 8 is equal to 8. And you were right, Jessica. Great job. Lori, what was your original equation, and what was your solution? y minus 4 equals 2, and I found out that y is equal to 6. That's correct. So we'll start with the original equation again. y minus 4 equals 2. In the second step, we'll replace your answer, 6, where the y is. And we have 6 minus 4 equals 2. And then finally, we find out in the last step that 2 equals 2. And if the numbers equal each other, she's right. Okay, Nick, what was your original equation and what was your solution? 4x equals 12, and I found out x equals 3. Okay, so we start with the original equation again. Pascal's putting it up for us. We'll replace the x in the second step with 3. And it turns out that 12 does equal 12. So you also were right. And then finally, Brad, what was your original equation and what did you find as your answer? My original equation was y divided by 5 equals 3. And I found out that y equals 15. 
Okay, so we start by copying the original equation. In the second step, we will replace the y with the 15. We'll put it in parentheses again. 15 divided by 5 equals 3. And then finally, we know that 3 does indeed equal 3. Well, I hope that you can see that solving one-step equations is a pretty simple job. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other. Therefore, the secret to solving equations is the property of equality.